Between September and November 2021, I had the opportunity of participating in a course of digital publishing with minimal computing, humanities at a global scale, dictated by professors of Maryland University, United States, and Universidad del Salvador from Argentina. This course was my first approach to digital humanities that uh, were very unknown to me until then. The course was about the making of a but a uh, bilingual uh, uh, digital editing of the Acarrete book relationship and the uh, to the trail uh, to Rio de la Plata and its 1943 Spanish version and its 1698 English version. So the participation of um, these courses was necessary for the teachers. Uh, y con el transcurso del mismo se fue evidente que el inglés era un elemento esencial para, el, para poder desarrollarse dentro del campo de las humanidades digitales. El primer aspecto que plantea trabajar en proyectos donde el idioma hablado es distinto al propio es su comprensión y traducción. Ningún idioma puede ser traducido simplemente de un modo literal al otro. La traducción se, no, se, no es una tarea sencilla, pues requiere comprender el sentido de los conceptos y su equivalente en el idioma al que intenta ser traducido. A la hora de traducir surgen algunas interrogantes sobre si la traducción. Uh, there are some questions on whether or not the translation should stay as, good, as, as close as possible to the original, even though it can be sound as forced or or if by just maintaining the general size of the text, is it enough? Certain concepts can generate difficulties when trying to capture its meaning when they are translated. Maybe, says Rojas in his article with that equivalent uh, reflection on translation into Spanish of open educational resources, educational resources stresses the, the purpose where the, the object is in the um, in the translation objective, they don't have to be equivalent to the original text, but they need to be suitable for the purpose. And with that, we always want to prioritize the message of the original text, but always maintaining the coherence into the language that they are translated into. In this sense, I believe we can achieve uh, translations that are agree with a lot more sense to this multilingual group with the language that everyone speaks is not only English, but we also we know the other languages of the participants. In my particular case, my partner from the group was an English speaker, but it has an intermediate level of Spanish, which allowed that teamwork was a lot more fruitful. In many cases, we believe that the only right requirement for teamwork is that everyone shares a language that usually is English. But my way of seeing this, this limits uh, wealth and the work that is possible with all, when all of the participants know, even in the basic level, the different languages of their partners. English speakers in this sense are a lot more limited because commonly they do not find the need of speaking other languages as it is the case of Spanish speakers. And with that, uh, this also limits their participation in projects when they work with text and the official language of that text is not English. It's visible in the research groups that when their work language is English, generally we find greater variety of nationalities among the groups of among the group members, but it doesn't happen like that when it's another language. This is because in part of those that do not come from English speaking countries, they see the learning of English as a need uh, compared to any other language, but while for English speakers, it is not essential for them to learn all the languages for the development of their academic life. This hegemony of English as a social language in the academia and the scientific uh, aspects is, is a fact that we cannot refute. And it's also quite striking if we consider how interconnected and globalized the world is. If we go back in time, English was not the most popular language, but it shared together with Latin, French, and German that came that were even more important. This meant that the academics needed to have a knowledge of all of these languages to stay up to date of the discussions among peers. And whenever any of them did any discovery, they didn't feel the, the obligation of naming this. And with that, uh, English speaker scientists also needed to learn other languages. But with the end of the world, the scientific community was centered in the States, and this marked the centrality of English so part of the scientific discoveries, especially informatic in this country, 
And this is how all of its denominations ended up being in English. The dilemma that this space is that English is not the most spoken language in the world and in terms of native speakers, but in the first two places we have Chinese followed by Spanish. Despite of that, English has becoming the hegemonic language. If we center ourselves on the specific environment of digital humanities, the closeness of English is also present, especially in the work tools that are used, such as HTML, XML, CSS, as well as the use of labels for the philological edition and coding. When working with the same, we can perceive that English is the language in which this language, in this everything was created. The use of labels for marking allows an approach to text that is not an approach with just reading. Editors not only center on their message, but on the way in which this message is presented. But these process can be a bit hindered for uh, with those that do not speak English because all of the tags and comments are in English. The work for translation becomes constant. English becomes the official language, even the text was not written originally in English, and therefore we're finally jumping from one language to the next. On behalf of the labels, so it requires an effort of contention of its meaning that can slow down this process. It's even more difficult when the knowledge of English is scarce. In names of the labels, we need to memorize them without being able to relate them directly with these where we become slower and more ministers because the confusion in these concepts could bring mistakes. So these wants to call the attention on the complexity of the process in non-English speaking context, multilingualism that can be perceptible in some types of work, as well as some projects is not reflected in the tools that are used or in the state of that. These can be coming to the understanding that these tools can generate some difficulties. And if with this, we had a foreign language, it's feasible that many feel disencouraged. It is quite curious that the creators of these tools in one way or another force their users to adapt themselves to them and instead of being uh, adapted, preventing that um, scope. So English speakers, users have this advantage from the beginning, affecting the development of digital humanities in non-English speaking context, making all of the projects in the peripheral countries more difficult. It's notorious that language is also perceptible in the, in the building of projects. Though many of the groups that have been generating them are multilingual in their presentation, they only use English. The authors of them feel the obligation of presenting their projects in this language, despite having dealt with that for during all of this process. You would think that this process will make them reflect on the need of multilingualism in their elaboration, opening to new languages. And this is due to the belief that English in one way or another is a universal language and therefore its use will allow for a greater spread of that project and a, a greater reach. At the same time, this reduces the reach of audience that this would have had. In the case of being translated to many languages, we need to break with the belief that English is the only necessary language. English has a great scope, but other languages also do, and we should put the focus on also that. Solution is establishing Chinese or Spanish as the hegemonic language because it would continue to be the same problem. Well, the solution is not there. It's not about defending our language appealing to nationalism that only lead to isolation. It's about adding other languages to education and thus communicate with the world. Therefore, we need to promote the learning of languages different to English in their academic environment. So this lack of multilingualism can be observed in scientific uh, magazines and articles where most of them are written in English, even by authors that do not speak the language. As we can observe here, the dual side has a great uh, number of languages. English, Spanish, and Portuguese is the main one. But texts in English have the greatest percentage compared to other languages. 
Uh, the same happens when we make the projects and we consider that these articles written in English will have a greater exit. This is due to certain criteria in the scientific world that should comply with the publications to be visible. One of them is a presentation in English and therefore the same are condemned to uh, being forgotten. This generates a division in the scientific community among those academics that are willing to accept these conditions and those who see the use of English as one more case of colonization. Publications that do not comply with these criteria are deemed as of having less quality by having the criteria not being able to pre be presented in English, which causes a limitation. All of this allows to observe that the capacity of understanding and speaking English becomes an essential need to expand within the world of digital humanities. It is a factor, it's not entirely exclu uh, uh, ex relegating this to another place, but uh, English is a predominant language in many cases. Instead of generating bridges among different cultures that want to communicate, it's more a language barrier. And in this sense, English speakers also lose the possibility of having access to the richness that other languages contribute, thus limiting the scope of several other projects that are only found in English. And maybe that is one of the motives why digital humanities are unknown by many people. So we need to understand this as a necessary requirement for a broader development of digital humanities where English is one of the many necessary languages, not the only to communicate. Uh, this is the only possible path to get greater scope of these research networks and the spreading of knowledge. It is the best way of generating, of generating greater connection among the different scientific uh, communities are, are around the world. This technological development uh, reduces distances, but language barriers puts them right where they are. The problem is this, the centrality of certain scientific communities that mark the research criteria for the rest. Many of these criteria don't take into account the particular context generating there for the isolation of several of these by not finding an, an environment that will promote this. Thank you very much.